Greek cuisine is appreciated all over the world for its simplicity of flavors and fresh ingredients. The people of Greece take their food very seriously as it is a cultural tradition not to just eat but a whole package of conversation, family union and friendly sharing around the dinner table. Join us as we explore the cultural flavors of Greece. Greece is situated in southeastern Europe at the end of the Balkan Peninsula and is also situated in three seas, the Aegean, the Ionian and the Mediterranean. Η Ελλάδα είναι πολύ τυχερή χώρα γιατί βρίσκεται σε αυτό το σημείο της Μεσογείου. Είναι όλο το χρόνο μία ήλιο, όλο στη χώρα. Ε, είμαστε τυχεροί γιατί περιτριγυριζόμαστε από πολλές θάλασσες και αυτός είναι ένας λόγος που έχουμε ε, μεγάλη ποικιλία από φρέσκα ψάρια όλο το χρόνο. Έχουμε πολύ καλή ποιότητα στο κρέας, στα πουλερικά, φρέσκα λαχανικά όλο το χρόνο και πολλά και φρέσκα ε, μυρωδικά. There is a huge variety of herbs and spices in Greek cooking. The key thing to remember is that Greek cuisine is often more subtle in flavor, so rarely will these flavorsome elements be used in excess. Basil is often used whenever a recipe contains tomatoes. It also goes well with nearly every type of food, so features prominently. In cooking, bay leaves are used to flavor soups, stews, meat and fish dishes. The strong aniseed flavor of fennel is a favorite with meats and fish marinades. A popular element in tomato sauces, egg dishes and vegetables is oregano. Parsley also adds flavor to a wide range of foods and Greek cooks use it in large quantities. Rosemary and thyme are used across the nation. Rosemary often complements roasted meats, while thyme enhances olive oils, meats, butter and vegetables. In Greek cuisine, cardamom seeds are often ground and used in sweet and salty baked goods, in cakes and for fish marinades. Cinnamon is used in roasts, meat sauces, sausages, plus sweets and marmalades. Cloves are also used in sweets, cakes, stewed fruits and preserves and sauces. Ginger is also a popular sweet flavoring as is vanilla. Vanilla beans feature in custards, preserves and all manner of cakes and sweets. Greek cooks and chefs use coriander with meat, mushrooms, in chocolate for cakes and in stuffed cabbage. Often found in red sauces, cumin is recognizable in zuzukia and meat patties. The Greeks use hot peppers in their cooking, but not often and generally sparingly. Tyro kafteri, a feta cheese dip, features the spicy taste of hot peppers. Often used to flavor grilled meat and fish, mustard is usually ground into a powder or paste and combined with olive oil and vinegar as a marinade. Herbs and spices vary across the country and some tend to be more regional than others. The massive coastline of the Greek mainland and islands provide an abundance of foods sourced straight from the sea. It is therefore no surprise that Greeks have developed a love of seafood. Η Ελλάδα είναι τυχερή χώρα γιατί περιτριγυρίζεται από πολλές θάλασσες. Έχουμε μεγάλη ποικιλία θαλασσινών, ε, όλο το χρόνο φρέσκα θαλασσινά, τόσο φρέσκα που από τη θάλασσα τα παίρνουμε και τα βάζουμε κατευθείαν στο πιάτο μας. Ε, υπάρχουν πολλά ε, πιάτα που φτιάχνουμε με τα θαλασσινά μας. Μερικά από αυτά είναι το πρόνς σαγανάκι, γαρίδες σαγανάκι, μαριδάκι, σαρδέλες λαδορίγανη, καλαμάρι, χταπόδι. 
και πολλά άλλα ε, θαλασσινά που ε, τα έχουμε σε μεγάλη ποικιλία και τα μαγειρεύουμε με πολλούς ε, διαφορετικούς τρόπους. A favorite and very traditional seafood dish is prawn saginaki. We will use a dozen king prawns and prepare enough food for three or four people. To cook the prawns, you'll need some simple key ingredients and seasonings. During the second stage of the recipe, we will use simple Neapolitan sauce, which has been pre-prepared using garlic, onions and passata, which are sieved tomatoes. You'll also need some vine ripened tomatoes, a handful of fresh mint leaves, and around 100 grams of good quality sheep milk feta cut into cubes. A shot glass of ouzo will add a splash of Greek authenticity to your dish. To begin this dish, Take a couple of large ripe tomatoes and, with a small sharp knife, remove their stalks. Then slice and dice them into small cubes, like so. Now is the time to prepare your prawns for cooking. Carefully take the shell away from around the main body of the prawn and ensure you remove all the legs from the shellfish. The meaty portion of the prawn should now be fully exposed, leaving the head and tail fully intact. When cooking prawns, it is important to remove the intestines. Simply run a small but sharp knife down the back of the body and remove the dark vein. Heat some oil in a nonstick frying pan to a high heat. Add about a dessert spoon of crushed garlic and stir well. Once the garlic has begun to brown, you can add your prawns to the heat one by one. Prawns cook very quickly, so turn them over after 30 seconds or so and allow them to cook for another 30 seconds before seasoning with a teaspoon of salt and a similar amount of ground black pepper. Then turn your prawns over in the pan once more. To add a truly authentic flavor, Splash a shot of ouzo to the pan and stand well back. The alcohol will ignite along with your taste buds. By now your prawn should definitely be cooked, so it's time to start work on the rich sauce. Add about 500 ml of a Neapolitan tomato sauce to the prawns. Stir well and ensure that all the shellfish are thoroughly coated. Grab your chopped tomato, chopped fresh mint and diced feta cheese. Add these to your other ingredients and stir in well. As your prawns are already well cooked, it is important not to overcook them now. So once the tomato sauce has warmed through, your authentic prawn saginaki is ready to serve. It's best enjoyed with pilaf rice or fresh crusty bread. Perfect for soaking up those delicious sauces. Coming up on Cultural Flavours, a baked three-layered aubergine favourite. And we learn to cook a classic delicious Greek dessert. Traditional Greek cooking is often based on Greek seasonal vegetables, fruits, grains and legumes. As many Greek dishes are in fact vegetarian, the cuisine has developed over time to take advantage of the subtle flavours found in a wide selection of vegetables, local and imported. Onions and garlic are the backbone of Greek flavours and the people of Greece probably use more garlic in their cooking than any other nation. Many vegetable dishes are flavoured with onions and garlic, as well as dips and nearly every sauce in the Greek culinary repertoire. Green and red bell peppers, or capsicums, feature in many Greek dishes. They can be eaten cooked and are also added to salads. 
Large red bell peppers are often loaded up with feta, rice and meat and served stuffed and lightly grilled. Tomatoes are also cooked this way. Tomatoes were introduced into the Greek culinary culture in about 1815, brought from South America by traders. Tomatoes have now become an important part of many delicious recipes, especially sauces and salads. Eggplant has a starring role in Greek cooking and there are many dishes that feature the large purple vegetable, like the moussaka we will cook next. And again, they are also popular stuffed. The very versatile vegetable in the Greek food vernacular is zucchini. Zucchini are used in all manner of dishes from pies to dips and of course, stuffed. The Greeks love their greens and beans, spinach and cabbage all have a place in the Greek diet, especially during the winter months. Of course, we have only touched the surface of the vegetables of Greece. Well-known vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, beets, corn, leeks and mushrooms also feature in regional cuisine. Even though the origins of moussaka are actually Arabic rather than Greek, with evidence of the dish dating back to the former Ottoman Empire and beyond, more than any other, this family favourite has still become synonymous with Greek cuisine. Moussaka is a paradoxical Greek food. It has an egg from Greece. All the products that are available in a moussaka are fresh. I would say κατευθύνει από τον κήπο μας. Ε, το μυστικό για να κάνεις έναν ε, μουσακά, ένα, ένα ωραίο πετυχημένο μουσακά, ε, είναι τα φρέσκα προϊόντα, πρώτο απ' όλα όμως η αγάπη και το μεράκι για αυτό που φτιάχνεις, ε, μία ε, ωραία απαλή γευστική κρέμα ε, από πάνω και έτσι έχουμε έναν ε, πολύ καλό μουσακά. To cook moussaka, you need to prepare your ingredients in three stages. Preparing a ragu sauce is the first stage and for this you will need 500 grams of lean beef mince, one tablespoon of crushed garlic, one white onion, half a litre of passata, salt and freshly ground black pepper. Of course, you will add some eggplant or aubergine along with some washed potatoes and these will be sliced to form the main layers of the dish. In order to prepare a bechamel sauce, you need around 250 grams of butter, one cup of flour, some milk, cheese and the yolks from three eggs. The first stage of creating your very own delicious moussaka is to prepare a rich tomato ragu. Take an onion and finely dice it like so. Then peel two cloves of garlic and roughly slice these also. Coarsely chop a handful of fresh parsley and put this to one side. Place a large saucepan on a medium to high heat, drizzle some oil and allow to warm through. Add about 500 grams of a good quality lean minced beef to the pan and brown the meat off. Once the mince has cooked through, add the chopped onion to the pan. Next, add the garlic and stir everything together. Keep turning the ingredients to ensure that they do not stick to the pan. Grab a handful of chopped parsley and add this to the dish. Season well with a good portion of salt and ground black pepper. Finally, pour in around half a litre of passata, which is basically sieved tomatoes. 
Mix all the ingredients together and allow to cook on a low to medium heat. While your ragu sauce is simmering, you can begin to prepare the bachamel sauce. First, heat 250 grams of butter in a medium saucepan until the butter has completely melted. Before the butter begins to turn brown, pour in one cup of plain flour and mix together using a whisk until the two ingredients start to combine and form a rough dough. Slowly add about one liter of milk to the pan and continue to mix well, ensuring that all the lumps are gone from the mixture. Next, pour in about one cup of grated cheese and whisk. Continue to stir until the heat of the mixture melts the cheese and all the ingredients combine. Finally, add the yolk from three eggs to the bechamel mixture and once again stir well and allow the sauce to cook before removing from the heat. Now, preheat your oven to 180 degrees centigrade. At last, it's time to begin the process of building up the layers of your moussaka. First, Slice your eggplants lengthwise to a thickness of less than one centimeter. Then peel and wash your potatoes and slice these also to a similar width. Put these to one side. Take a large baking tray and lightly oil its base with olive oil. To begin the layering process, take your strips of eggplant and carefully place them across the base of the tray, making sure that the pieces overlap each other. Next, create a layer of sliced potato. Again, ensure that the slices overlap slightly. Once this layer is complete, you are ready to add a layer of the ragu sauce to the tray. With a large spoon, cover the potatoes with your meat sauce to a thickness of around one to two centimeters. Add another layer of potatoes over the sauce and then finally top with another layer of eggplant. Finally, pour your bechamel sauce all over the ingredients in the tray and spread it evenly using a spatula. Your moussaka is now ready to be cooked in your oven. Cook until the top layer begins to turn golden brown. Then your authentic moussaka is ready to serve. Hearty, healthy and delicious. Next on Cultural Flavours, a step-by-step -step guide to a classic Grecian dessert. Desserts and sweets play a major role in the Greek food culture. Honey, nuts, cream, fruit and pastry are all very commonly used in many combinations across the region, just as they are here in this mouth-watering katafi. Τα γλυκά είναι κάτι το πολύ αγαπημένο για τον ελληνικό λαό. Ε, το γλυκό βρίσκεται μέσα στην καθημερινότητά μας. Ε, μερικά από αυτά τα γλυκά είναι το γαλακτομπόρικο, ρεβανί, καριδόπιτα, το κρύμι κατά ήθη. Οι Έλληνες φτιάχνουν γλυκά ε, για την δικιά τους απόλαυση, όμως και για να τα δώσουν σαν δώρο σε αγαπημένα πρόσωπα. Ε, το κρύμι κατά ήθη είναι ένα πολύ αγαπημένο γλυκό ε, της καθημερινότητας από τον ελληνικό λαό. Ε, το έχουμε πάρει από την Κωνσταντινούπολη και το αυθεντικό του όνομα ήταν Εκμέρι. To make a taffy, you will need a number of ingredients, all of which are commonly available. Most supermarkets should stock shredded pastry as well as glacé cherries. We're preparing this dessert for 24 servings. Simply reduce all of these quantities proportionally if you wish to prepare for a smaller number of diners. The first stage of this recipe is to prepare a sugar syrup. First, fill a saucepan with about four cups of water. Add two cups of sugar to the water. Next, grab a stick of cinnamon and pop this onto the sugar water. Now, squeeze the juice of a quarter of a lemon and add the whole lemon to the water. Finally, give it a good stir. At this stage, it's a good idea to place the sugar water on a high heat. Bring it to a boil and then allow it to simmer on high while you prepare the rest of the dessert. 
The next step is to prepare the custard. Pour three and a half litres of the milk into a large saucepan, keeping half a litre for later. Take a cup of sugar and add this to the pan along with half a cup of vanilla sugar. Put the milk aside as we will need to heat this up later. Now, take a medium-sized mixing bowl and add half a cup each of corn flour and custard powder. Give these a quick whisk to aerate them. Slowly add the remaining one half a litre of milk to the mixing bowl and continue to whisk until the powders and milk are completely combined. Put this bowl aside with your milk. By now your sugar water should have had time to reduce down and become slightly more syrupy. Now we can begin to build the layers of this delicious dessert. Grab your shredded pastry and spread it out evenly across the base of your baking tray. Take a cup of crushed mixed nuts and liberally sprinkle them over the pastry. Lastly, using a spoon, drizzle about half a cup of melted butter all over the ingredients. When ready, pop the tray into a preheated oven at about 180 degrees for just five or so minutes. Now it's time to make the custard using the milk and sugar we prepared earlier. Put the pan on a high heat and bring it to a boil. Take the mixing bowl containing custard powder, corn flour and milk and add this to the saucepan. You need to keep whisking all the time until the custard reaches this smooth consistency. By now your sugar water should have had time to reduce down and become slightly more syrupy. Remove the syrup from the heat and pour it over your pastry and nuts, which by now should be ready and removed from the oven. Using a spoon, pat down your nuts and ensure the surface is level and even. Then pour your custard carefully into the baking tray and allow to cool. Only when your custard has had time to cool is it possible to put the finishing touches on this mouth-watering dessert. Using a spatula, place large scoops of fresh whipped cream on top of the custard layer. Smooth the cream over so that it completely covers the custard. Next, take some more crushed nuts and again liberally sprinkle the nuts over the cream. Finally, pop a few glacé cherries at regular intervals and your katafi is ready to be enjoyed. Mmm, katafi, a Greek favourite. Now, the last challenge is just not to eat too much. Now that we have tempted you with the amazing variation of food from the ancient culture of Greece, it's time to try them for yourself. The ingredients are easy to find no matter where you live. Go to your local supermarkets, explore the produce, then have a go at cooking these recipes for your friends and family the Greek way. Cultural Flavors continues to explore the world through the diversity of food. Let us take you on a gastronomic journey so you can experience the tastes of the globe at home. Oh.